Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. It is Full Lid Friday. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get done. Sorry. Anyway, today guys, we're gonna be talking about a few things. It's gonna be a short video, just quick. We got a, a good Reddit thread for some Bridezillas, which is some of my favorite content. People just are a bunch of a-holes and it's great to go through it. We've got douche mom of the day, like there's like three of them. Okay, we're gonna talk about all that. We're gonna go down, Ruby Frank's got a new parenting course. Well, let's take a look at it, shall we? And all that and more coming up today on the Dad Challenge Podcast. But before we get to that, we've got to dance because it's Friday, I dance on Fridays now. Yeah, oh. Amanda Friel. Let's see what you win. Let's hope it's bathwater. Bath Sticker. Not bad. Not bad. That's bad. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go. Thor, I am not. Christine, twelve twenty-six. Let's play the game. Come on, keychain. That's fun. Let's go. Let's talk first about Ruby Frank's parenting course. Who's excited? I'm excited. It's expensive though, okay? So if you wanna start training in Ruby's course, first of all, that photo's 100 years old. It's not what she looks like anymore. And who's Jody Hildebrandt? Get mentally fit and relationally connected. I don't believe you. And you know why I don't believe you? Because you have someone like Ruby Frank giving parenting advice. Ruby Frank. <laughs> Okay, that's like taking adoption advice from Micah. So that's a big old nope. Ruby Frank, let me, let's just read this together. Welcome to your one-on-one -on -one training with Ruby Frankie. Frank, Frank, Frank. I'm a connections, that's spelt dumb, mental fitness trainer <laughs> who loves guiding women out of cultural distortions and into the truth of who they really are. Cultural distortions. Um, Ruby, I don't know if you know this about yourself, but you're a Mormon. Uh, okay. Mormon women are absolutely under the patriarch and you are under that. You are a second class citizen in your own damn house based on the religion that you love. So that's a lie. Cool. This is likely a Mormon thing. So basically it's like Mormon women supporting other Mormon women saying, Hey, it's okay to be a second class citizen. Cause I am too. Let's get together and knit. With my seven years of experience in social media marketing, I have a unique backstage view of how money, influence, and power have been used to manipulate the masses, most specifically mothers. Is she shitting me right now? Because you do that. Are you, she's basically just admitting right there, I know how to use power, money, and influence to manipulate my viewers. She just admits it. And she's offering this as like it's a, it's, it's a feature, not a bug. Ruby Dish. That's a shirt, by the way. I've been married to my husband, Kevin, for 20 years and have six children, all of which hate me. She didn't say it. I spend my days keeping my sourdough start alive, experimenting with sprouts, and homeschooling my youngest. You should have said I spend my days exploiting my children for money on YouTube, and I'm a terrible mother. Let's just take a look at some of Ruby Frank's best parenting hits, all here today. <laughs> Torturing him. Stop it. I know you're not, but it looks like you are. I'm only going to say it one more time, and then you're going to lose the privilege to eat dinner. So she's on camera saying you're not going to eat. That's bad. It's time for some dad advice, and it's going to be anti what Ruby's advice is going to be. Do not do not punish your children with eating, with food. It's gonna make them food insecure, and that's a bad thing. So she's already on camera saying, I use food as a punishment. <laughs> so that's a fail right there. You're gonna take classes from this lady? Don't. 
Next one, right up here we go. Dad, what are you doing over there? You take no text. Says the woman at the dinner table with a camera. What you're not allowed to text, but I'm gonna film our entire. We're gonna eat our dinner. I'm gonna have the camera out. So she turned the camera on while he's texting because she wanted to capture it on the video. This is a person offering parenting classes. I kid you not. Texting at the dinner table. No texting. Where is he at? Mm -mm. Where is he at? I see it. We should clarify that in our house, all our kids know that uh, cell phones are free game for parents. So we can monitor safety. This I agree with as a parent. But I don't agree with reading it on the internet for everybody to see, dumbass. This guy looks like Gru. Yeah, no kid ever said, Yay, I'm so glad my parents read my text messages. <laughs> said, no. What is this? <laughs> I really like you. <gasps> don't ever do this. Look at the, the stand unless this is fake, and it might be. Don't ever do this to your child. This, <laughs> Especially if you have over 2 million subscribers on your channel. You shitting me that you're reading this to everybody? If you don't think this is inappropriate as a parent, you should not be a parent. Like, you can re I don't mind if your kid, you read your kid's text messages. Sure, you should be able to do that. That's your, I would do. But I wouldn't do this. I, hold on. I did not say that. <laughs> How do you work this stupid phone? How do <laughs> what phone is, I swear I have to remember how to work it every time I go through it. Why do you do your vlog like this? What is she doing here? Is she like, the only way to check the camera? Like, why does she film that way? I don't, chill with your angles. Who are you texting? Any girlfriend? Whoa, whoa, I really like you. I saw you in my dreams last night. <laughs> <laughs> that is so bad, don't fucking do that. Nature of your relationship with this individual. I mean, there's like 300 texts in here. Um, <laughs> do you like her, like her, or do you just. Again, not a conversation for the internet. You utter disgusting D bags. Just like, or she. These people! You can't be serious! Did you just read your kids' personal text messages on the internet for everyone to see? You. Disgust me! I'm leaving. Thank you, Creepy Makeup Baby. It's been a while. I haven't seen her in a while. A new friend. That is really, really nice. um, he doesn't want to answer the question. Okay. I see him with her and he likes her. Again, not a conversation for the world! Do you like you back? Let's not forget this gem where she's he's admitting he has no friends and that she granted him for seven months. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. And she's laughing about it with her shitty ass fake eyelashes. And he was grounded for seven months. What did he do? Kill somebody? Look, I get grounding your children. Like sometimes it's absolutely, but for seven, uh, there's nothing you can do to be grounded for seven months. She is crazy. They are crazy. And she's giving a parenting course. <laughs> I don't think our viewers know that. <laughs> and she admitted it, so there you go. Ruby, you're a bad mom. Please, don't take advice from this woman. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby um, November. in November. Why? Abby looks very innocent to me. She looks like she's just, she's nice. And again, admitting what you're doing to your children on, on camera. This is so dumb, Ruby. You're so dumb. And, and, and you blood. may you may never get the phone back. <laughs> if you cut one more thing in my house, <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm going to cut its head off. God, I love you so much! So what are you going to do? Are you going to cut anything? That one gets me. Are you kidding me? And they're all laughing at this little girl. That's her, clearly her favorite toy. My daughter had a, had Daff and he was a giraffe. And if I would have ever done that, my wife would have divorced me. If I would have said some shit like that. Could you imagine this? This is a parent giving parenting courses. All right, we gotta get keep moving on, sorry. I just got a text message. Oh, and we can't forget this one. Uh, from Eve's teacher. And she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today, and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children. 
She's five. This girl is five when this video was made. Five. Okay? Five. We still make our children's lunches, not the teenagers, because they don't eat. I don't know what they do at school. Like, what do you do? How are you eating? Oh, eat. But the little kids, I'm packed their lunch until they don't want me to pack their lunch anymore, because you know what? I love my children. Uh, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch. You should, too, parenting teacher. If you're not uncomfortable with your child being hungry, you're not a good parent. You should never feel comfort that your child is hungry. You should never be like, yeah, this is good. She is five. And it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. Oh, well. We wouldn't want to ease the discomfort of our five-year-olds, would we? Parenting coach. Holy shit! Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning, and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. As you sit in your car, you could have just drove or something. This, could you imagine the teacher on the other line be like, oh, you're not going to bring her lunch? No, I'd rather her be hungry. Well, CPS intensifies. I, if I was a teacher, I'd be calling the police stat. This shit, this lady's crazy. So let's see what else we got in the old hit list here. The lunch. I'm going to explain the rules to this. Seven. We're done. So you're all like, what? I have your attention now? Mm -hmm. Is that it? You're so all going to listen? If you have something in the bag that you would like out, you can pay cash for it. So you learn the value of your items. Or um, you can give what? Dad, I'll let you take the conversation um, from here. You can... Do an equivalent value chore. Okay, so <laughs> this is amazing parents. I didn't even know this existed. So they they took all their shit away because they were being bad and they said, if you want it back, you have to pay me to get it back. So cash, they have their cash that they have allowance or whatever. Um, they get money for that, right? And they have to pay their parents. Ruby's taking money from her kids to get their own shit back or they have to work for it. Parenting courses by Ruby. Don't take Ruby's parenting courses. All right, let's say there's enough. We can do more of those later. So here's competition for douche mom of the day. First up is this TikTok mom who has a newborn baby who literally needs to chillax on the fillers. Just please consider paying for diapers instead. And watch this mother dance on TikTok with her child. Mom shouldn't dance, they say. First of all, let me let me address this whole shitty thing on you see on social media and Instagram and TikTok. They have this thing where they post a little blurb that says, somebody said I shouldn't do this thing and now I'm gonna do the thing. Nobody said anything to you. Everybody nothings you. They always come up with this like, look what someone said to me and so I'm gonna make a video about it. Who says mom shouldn't dance? Okay, but here's why they shouldn't. The kid's neck is gonna snap. Oh, this lady. I'm sorry, she's nasty and disgusting. So she's in running for douche mom of the day. Neck, the kid's neck's like this. I'm sorry. Stop having kids as accessories. Okay, please stop. And stop doing this on TikTok. You look stupid and it makes you look dumb and nobody likes you. Nobody. Your friends who have kids, they do the same thing, but they also judge you. Everybody judges you. Your own husband hates you. That's what's going on here. Douche mom of the day. What's her name? Dan her name is Danielle Enriquez. So, Danielle Enriquez, you know what? It's not even a competition. You get one. I'll send you a certificate. Next is the douche mom of probably close to the century, okay? You guys know how I feel about people on OnlyFans and people who are in PRN who have children, okay? It's selfish and it's disgusting. I'm sorry. Don't care. Judge me all you want. If you're in the PRN industry and you have children, you are selfish, selfish, selfish. And here is an example of that. And we can, there's probably tons more than this, okay? OnlyFans star Marissa Cloutier arrested after neighbors spot her son, four, outside alone and crying. But before we get to that, let's hear what she has to say. Hi guys. I just wanted to come on here and say that I do see your comments, I do see your concerns. I, legally, I'm only allowed to say so much regarding it, and I know there's a lot of things being posted online that are very out of context and very much untrue, so please do not believe everything that you will read on the internet. <laughs> okay. 
Thanks. Well, let's see what we shouldn't be believing when we read something on the internet. Marissa Cloutier, better known as Digital Princess on TikTok, OnlyFans, and Twitch, is begging her fans not to believe everything they read after news of her recent arrest for child neglect began circulating on social media. Well, what did she do, you ask? Well, let's find out. Maybe she should take parenting advice from Ruby. I know there's a lot of things that are being posted online that are out of context and very much untrue. Please do not believe everything you read. Okay, well, no. The 24-year-old influencer also shares content on Pornhub that receives millions of views, was arrested and charged last Wednesday after a neighbor reported her four-year-old son wandering around outside of her Fort Myers, Florida home by himself at 10 p.m., police said. Police said. A four-year-old wandering outside in Florida by himself at 10 p.m. What are we not supposed to do? Is that a lie? Well, I guess we'll find out. Neighbors said her son had been outside alone and crying and that a car that's normally in the driveway of her home was not there. And the door leading to her home had been open, according to a probable cause statement by the Fort Myers Police Department. Are you telling me that the police are lying there? Cloutier? Cloutier reported the return to the home before 11 p.m. and said she had to run out to get laundry detergent and had only been away for about 15 minutes, the report stated. That's a bullshit lie. Yes, it is. And uh, okay, even if it was the truth. Are you going to seriously leave a four-year-old at home alone while you leave to get laundry detergent? Even that excuse is not good. Are you serious? But we know it's a lie anyway. But even at that point, you're stupid and I hate you. But authorities didn't believe her account. They said she had been wearing a short black dress and eyeliner, attire and makeup that is not usually conducive to a late night run to a convenience store. The report read, and the bottle of detergent had been half empty. What'd you do? Drink it? She had detergent in her car and she brought it out because she saw the police. That's what happened. She was scared because the police were there and the, she's like, oh my God. She brings out, I had to buy this. Well, where's the receipt? Yeah, they didn't believe her shit. She's stupid. Cloutier eventually told authorities that she had actually been visiting a friend <laughs> and left at 930 after putting her son to bed and that her anxiety made her lie. Well, please make sure this kid does not is not with this mom anymore. Please, 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 please. I don't care what your anxiety made you do. You're a bad parent and you shouldn't have this kid. You should literally have your kid taken away. And unfortunately, when CPS is involved in these types of things, this is absolutely what they'll do. But for other kids being taken advantage of and exploited, they will do nothing. It has to come to this level. She was then arrested and booked into Lee County Jail early the following morning and released without bail about 12 hours later. According to booking records, her mother had arrived at the time of her arrest to take custody of her son. News of Cloutier's arrest circulated online quickly, and the social media influencer's 2.2 million followers on TikTok was just as quick to fire back. She posted TikTok days after her arrest, addressing the controversy. I'm not trying to avoid or hide the situation. For those who know how legal stuff works, legally, I'm only allowed to say so much regarding it. No, you're guilty as F. The video was removed shortly after, but has been reshared. Cloutier's TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter accounts have been now been set to private. Cloutier said she had only just moved to Fort Myers from Colorado after being stalked by online fans, according to report. Again, one more reason to not put your, sh your ass on the internet, because if you're being stalked, so if you need one more reason to not shake your ass on the internet, if you have children, this is one of them, because look what just happened the other day. Instagram influencer allegedly killed by stranger in murder-suicide. A Texas Instagram influencer was found strangled to death in what detectives are calling a murder-suicide. Cops say Jenna Gagne, Janae Gagne, Janae, Janae Gagne, better known as Miss Mercedes Moore, to her more than 2.6 million Instagram followers, was found slain in her Cortland Sugarland apartments in Richmond. Among her followers were rappers Megan The Stallion, Cardi B, Snoop Dogg, and Meek Mill. Great, those are good influencers. She also had a popular page on raunchy OnlyFans. Officers who had been again, she was an OnlyFans actor too. Okay, officers who had been called to perform a welfare check discovered the body. Now, investigators are trying to unravel the bizarre twist. Beside Gagner, we also found the body of a Florida man named Kevin Alexander Accordo. He apparently, he apparently killed himself with multiple sharp force trauma. Cops said in a statement, it is not believed that there was a relationship between the suspect and the victim. But London Gagne said the days before her death, her sister was being stalked. The grieving sister implied on Instagram that Accordo was, was the alleged stalker. She wasn't robbed. It was just a stalker from out of state who'd been stalking her. Yesterday is the worst day of my life. My heart is gone. The one friend oddly added a number of bizarre comments. Mercedes did not have a sugar daddy or a pimp. Never did. She was not robbed. She did not have HIV. She didn't have COVID. She wasn't in an accident. She was, she was murdered. Okay. When the investigation is complete, the family will release more details. It's crazy. We have to even post this, but y'all getting out of line with these crazy, disrespectful ass stories. Okay. I just wanted to read that story because that's crazy because this lady was just saying the same thing, but she has a child. Okay. Who she completely neg neglects. Anybody who is in the PR industry, OnlyFans, all these people who do these types of things, who have children, 
they neglect their children and they all do. I will make a blanket statement that if you have an OnlyFans and you are in the adult film industry, you are a neglectful parent. And I think it's absolutely selfish that you have children. So let's continue. Cloutier pled not guilty to the charge and expected to appear in court on September 27th, according to booking records. Neither Cloutier nor her lawyer has responded to Inside Edition's request. Of course they haven't because they're guilty. So, uh, Marissa Cloutier, you are absolutely douche mom of the day as well. Congratulations. Do not continue to support these people. If you are interested in in OnlyFans and women and paying them for sex and all that kind of stuff, do what you gotta do if you're consenting. But let's make it not okay to, to be a parent and do this. Like if you're if you're a guy and you wanna pay for this stuff, why don't you just pay for the ones who don't have children? Because to me that's extra super icky. Like, ugh, icky. If the only way you can make money is to shake your ass on the internet, you're doing it wrong. But if you're shaking your ass on the internet and you're you know an adult, who doesn't have children and you know you want to do your thing do your thing i'm just saying if you have kids and do it i think you're bad all right let's move on i love one of my favorite things on reddit is going to uh what's called bridezillas and it is amazing it's never short of some of the most disgusting people ever and they just I think they're cool <laughs> it's amazing okay so this one says your work friend is pretty she can't come to the wedding oh plot thickens. So let's hear what she has to say. Am I the asshole for telling my fiance to get her insecurities in check and grow up after she humiliated my coworker? And of course, the it's not the asshole because I would never, I mean, I'll read some asshole ones, but I like the not the asshole ones. Recently, I, 25 male, got engaged to my amazing fiance, 24 female. Well, you should take that word, that moniker amazing out because clearly she's not. I was the happiest I've ever been when Amy said yes and was nothing but excited for our wedding. <laughs> As soon as this red flag like this pops up, everybody, stop the planning process. We started planning the venues, the dates, and the invites. When talking about who to invite, we both agreed to invite our coworkers, as we have worked in our respective jobs for years and like them all. As I checked that off the list, Amy spoke up and said, everyone from my job can come except my work friend, Tally, 26 female. Tally is also one of my close friends, so this surprised me that Amy didn't want to invite her. She has met Tally multiple times and there didn't seem to be any issues. When I asked why, she said she just doesn't like her and finds our friendship uncomfortable. She's jealous. Saying she thinks that Tally is the type of person to try to sway, take in men, and be the center of attention. Okay. After, ta after talking some more to see where she got this idea, it turned out this was based on nothing but Tally's looks. As even Amy admitted that Tally is always very kind to her. But still, Amy is adamant about Tally not going and said that she makes her insecure. Amy is a beautiful woman, so I don't know what, what makes her feel this way. First of all, Amy is a douchebag. That's, that's what it is, okay? Like, insane. This idea that my wedding is my day, I get, I sort of get the idea, but at the same time, you're inviting a whole bunch of people. I mean, I've done weddings for 10 years. I hated weddings. I hated them all because they're all like this. But imagine having this idea of like, hey, my wedding is just a celebration and we want our friends to be there because we love them. Let's make, let's stop saying weddings are about the girl. Okay, let's let's say it's about family, it's about union, it's about partying, it's about celebrating, it's about both people. It's not about what the bride looks like. Okay, but that's where we've allowed our society to be. Well, it is the girl, it is the woman's day. It's the girl. you know what, F that noise. Let's change that shit up. I told Amy that if it makes her feel uncomfortable not having Tally at the wedding, then it's fine. But before invitations go out, I wanted to speak to her privately to let her know to save the embarrassment. Oh, I wanted to let her know privately to, to, to save her the embarrassment. We wanted to let Tally know. Amy agreed and that was really that. We didn't speak on the matter after. First of all, dude, not cool. If Tally's your friend. A week or so later, I went into work and Tally started to ignore me, only really talking if it was work related. I was confused as it isn't just her. Our co-workers have started to ignore her and acting strange to me. So I contacted her boyfriend only for him to be sarcastic on the phone. I asked what the problem was and he asked if I actually didn't know what happened. I, he then filled me in. Turned out, a few days earlier, Amy came into my work on my day off with invitations. Oh, she did not. I had no idea she even made them yet and handed everyone an invite in front of Tally, then saying to Tally, you aren't invited. Women like you aren't welcome. <laughs> which has sparked everyone suggesting she is my other woman. Since then, she has been harassed by some guys at work and shunned by the woman. And shunned, uh, since then, she's been harassed by some guys at work and shunned by the other women. She is now looking for another job. Oh my God. Amy, if you're watching this, you are a bag of smashed assholes. 
This pissed me off and I apologized profusely as I didn't know. When I got home that night, I confronted Amy about this. She denied it at first. So she lied is what you're saying at first. So if her first inclination is to lie to you and you're gonna marry this lady, let me tell you something about my wife. Okay, my wife can't lie. I, don't, I think in our marriage of almost, I think it's 15 years this year. Yeah, coming up in 15 years. I've maybe caught my wife in two lies, two. Unless she's a really good liar, which she's not, because I'm really good at catching lies. She just doesn't do it. And, and that's why I can remember the two, because they're so outside of the norm, that I was like, what the heck? And they weren't even, they weren't even, they were dumb. So don't marry somebody who lies, everybody. Okay, that's, that's my first advice for you. Um, so she denied it, and then she told me she did it, but it's now not an issue because she's quitting her job. Okay, so you went in and completely embarrassed her, and now she's quitting the job, so it's all good. She, she got the twofer. She shamed this pretty lady, and she doesn't have to work with her fiance anymore. Amy is a dirt. I flipped on her saying how she clearly didn't trust me to say, and that she crossed a line doing all this behind my back. She didn't see the problem and got upset asking me why I was so mad. Are you kidding me? This is textbook abuse, by the way, everybody. If you confront your spouse or partner or whatever with an allegation of something and they turn it around on you, that's called gaslighting, okay? And that is literally a form of abuse. So, this guy, I hope he left. Me responding, if we're really gonna get married, get your insecurities in check and grow up. No, you should have said, well, we're done. That's what you should have said. I stayed at a friend's since, but have had texts from Amy. Her friends and her mother saying, I'm an asshole for this and that Amy doesn't deserve this treatment. <laughs> oh God, guy, her friends, her parents, her mom, everybody thinks it's on her side and she's clearly in the wrong and you're just like gonna stay with I hope he doesn't stay with her. Woo, he's not the asshole, but he's, he needs to grow some balls. I should have explained better two things. I've made many attempts to speak to Tally privately to find out what was happening prior to contacting her boyfriend. She brushed me off. So he said, he's trying to get to the bottom of it. She wouldn't talk to him. So that's why he spoke to her boyfriend. The wedding is currently on hold. That is also why I'm staying at my friend's house. Need some distance to figure stuff out. I made the post because of all the texts. Yes, don't marry this woman. Run away, run away as far as you absolutely possibly can. And if that thing with Tally doesn't work out, Tally seems like a nice girl. Just saying. All I can ask is that people in the op. Hello? Okay, what's up? Are you in traffic? Oh, have fun. Are you calling? I'm doing a video. So you call me. If you're calling me from the Ottawa Highway, I, th I assume you're in an accident and dead. So please don't do that. Oh, I hate the 407. I'm not paying $97 to, to avoid an hour of driving. That's okay. I can watch TV in my Tesla. Again, the 407 can suck my left nut. Nobody in our family is ever going to go on the 407 if I have anything to say with it. It is the worst money grab in Ontario's history. I hate it. <laughs> Sam's crying. Let them out, let them roam around. He's fine. The cats will find a space to chill. Let them out if they're crying. All right, <laughs> is that what you called me? Bye, I love you. That was my wife, okay? My wife is driving to Ottawa right now and apparently there's tons of traffic, okay? And she, she likes to take the 407, but I absolutely am like, it's not that I can't afford to take the 407. It's a principal thing at this point. It costs almost $100, a toll highway that costs $100 to take. A toll highway, okay? If you take one exit on this highway without a transponder or whatever it's called, it's $10 for less than two kilometers, okay? So that that was that conversation. <laughs> She's just mad because the cat's, his Roni's crying in his cage. She won't let him out. Everybody's mad, but I'm here doing videos. She's just telling me to take the 407 and I'm not gonna do it. I will spend more time in traffic on principle alone then take the 407. F the 407. All right, let's get back to this. You need to drop Amy like a hot potato, okay? Like a dirty diaper. You need to drop her like it's hot. You need to drop her like these influencers drop their babies off beds. Okay? Just, just drop her. Ta Amy does not deserve you. You're not the asshole. Amy's absolutely the asshole and you need to leave her shit ASAP. That's the dad advice today for you, my friend. I don't know if you're looking for it, but you got it there. Amy is a bad person. Any... I, I guess I don't know this because my wife and I are not jealous people. Like, again, I've talked, I've said this a million times. Like, we're at the mall and there's a hot dog. I'm like, that guy's hot. You think he's hot? My, we, I can say that girl's hot over there or whatever. I like, your, or your friend is hot. And my wife doesn't care. We have this type of relationship where jealousy is not even, it's not even a thought. It's just not, it's just not part of it. I, I don't understand jealousy. So maybe that's why I'm kind of harsh on this. But why would you be jealous of someone who has a coworker who's good looking? The heck? That's so weird to me. Whatever, I guess I just, I maybe I'm privileged that way because 
I just don't understand why people are jealous. So I wanted to just do one quick thing real quick. Um, I want to read something to you guys. Okay, so you guys, if you guys are one of the Dad Challenge podcasts, you know, if you're part of the Dad Bod Squad, or whatever we call it in the chat, you often will see a lady named Joanna over there. And I'm going to take you guys to church a little bit today. Not, not, not Christian church, but church. Church of the good peoples. That's what I call this. And Joanna is one of those people. She is good people. And recently, Joanna had passed away. She has been uh, messaging me for a few weeks. She had cancer and has just recently passed away. And her husband and her family have been reaching out to me. And I asked if I could share this with you guys. And Joanna has been, was absolutely, before she had passed away, said I could share this um, and everything. If you guys are in the chat, you often see Joanna just throwing money. 15, 20 bucks, 10 bucks and 99 cents. She just, and I keep telling her to stop, but she, she, <laughs> For what it is, Joanna just is very generous and she just supports those that she loves. And I wanted to honor Joanna today. Um, and I'm gonna read this little thing that uh, her husband sent me about who she really was because her legacy is important. Everybody, and it's in important at the end of these things to talk about the importance of a legacy, the importance of doing good things because I ask you guys to do good things all the time. I try to do good things. And I think in honor of Joanna today, let's talk about what the ramifications of your legacy could have, the ripple effects. Okay, so um, just a few things about Joe. Joe was a dance teacher since she was 17 years old. She had a degree in astronomy, which is badass, I'm not gonna lie. She hated odd numbers to the extreme, which cool. We lost our girl triplets just after Christmas last year, which is so heartbreaking. She could speak four languages. Joanna hated Germans, <laughs> but loved their food. Joanna would never follow a sentence with but because she felt it negated everything previously said. Joanna and I absolutely agree on that. Joe anonymously gifted 246,000 to watch her for their startup. Gifted, not invested. I myself don't follow them. Joe loved Ryan and Shane, mainly Ryan though. So Joanna was a very generous person. She loved WTK, she loved Ed Sheeran, loved K-pop, even though she could only understand maybe four words in Korean. She desperately wanted to do a stay in Antarctica, to stay in Antarctica and visit North Korea. Hated Bill Gates and Windows. Agreed. I don't know if you can hear my computer fan going. That's a Windows. Got her, got her red hat certification at 20, which is a coding thing, I think, which is amazing. Used Debian and Mac as her main OS. Really hated Windows. Would accept it though for gaming. Okay. Acceptable. When grading her students, Joe would rewatch the same routine over and over again so she wasn't missing anything. It sounded like she was fair and amazing. I spoke to Joanna many times. Completely starstruck by Charles, Jim, and Josh. Allie was the BFF she never really had. That's cute. So he's talking about creators, myself included, which I'm very honored to be a part of that because a lot of those creators are amazing. All Joe ever wanted to do with her life was help people. I am so glad she succeeded in this. Joe suffered from anorexia, a constant struggle for Joe. And Joe recently just passed away. And today I wanted to honor Joe by telling you the incredible things that she did. She did. And she, and again, that's just a snippet of what she did. She gave money, she supported. And the thing is, she was okay with family vloggers until she started seeing my content. And they became an adamant, ardent person against family exploitation. And she was there feeding me information, giving me ideas, and sending me millions of cat memes which I loved. Every day, Joanna would send me five to 10 pictures of a cat doing something funny, and I absolutely loved it. To the point, and again, this is similar to my mother who passed away of lung cancer. My mom died a very lonely, very sad person because of the choices that she made in her life. I was there because I'm her son, and I was there to hold her hand when she took her last breath. It's some of the saddest things, and something I'll never be able to unsee. Um, but Joanna is the opposite and someone suffering from this and who was fading quite fast in the last two weeks of her life, never, ever had complained once, never once. Never said, I'm so pissed at this, nothing like that. Was always happy, we would talk, we would do some FaceTimes, she would send me tons of memes and just laugh right until the very end. Life can be unfair, but it can also be really amazing. Um, hope everyone has had a great day or night. Thanks for listening. So if there's anything that Joanna's legacy could leave behind, it's that laughing is actually one of the most important things we can do in our life. 
And yeah, we talk about a lot of serious things on the show. But at the end, in the end, having fun and laughing and calling and make fun of people if that's how you laugh is important too. And if there's anything you could take away from Joanna's story and her legacy is do the things that make you happy. Life is too short. Do the things that make you laugh. Don't put yourself in situations like this guy with Amy, right? Don't do it. If you're ever unhappy in a position you're in, a job or whatever, and you feel sad or depressed, don't do it. There is a will, there is a way you will find a way out, get out of it. I always, I always told myself, if I ever had a job or a place that I did not like and I hated it, I would never do it. That's why I've had lots of jobs. And now I'm happiest I've ever been because I didn't settle. So if Joanna could say anything to you guys, and I think I could speak for her on this, do the thing that makes you the most happy. Take the risk, do the art, get the different job, go back to school, do something, never be unhappy. And you have the capacity as a human to do that. When there's a will, there's a way. And in honor of Joanna, I'm asking you guys to do something that makes you happy. Take care of yourself. Long-term plan something, forgive somebody, love people and laugh. Always laugh, find a way to laugh. Um, and Joanna, this ending was in honor of you. You are valuable, you are incredible, and you left a lasting impression on me for sure. And I wanna thank you for everything that you gave me and all the laughs that we had. Rest in peace. I'll see you guys Monday. Today was a good day. We went to coastal New South Wales, went to the beach. I love days like today. Way ready to go to bed. But I don't want to because I don't want to miss out on anything. But yeah, it was a great day and we had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, love you guys.